Hello, everyone. Today is Wednesday, May the 10th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep this conversation going by supporting the show, sharing it online, leaving us a good review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a link in the description of this podcast so you can do just that. But before we do anything else, I want to start this Wednesday off right with the verse of the day. The verse of the day. It's coming from James 1.26. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. I love this. We've been going through the book of James in Illuminate uh, in our youth group. Mm-hmm. And um, just this passage, uh, the whole book of James is set up with like, this is what you think religion is. This is what religion actually looks like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what you've been taught. This is what it for real is. Um, and this like, if you don't put into practice in, in your speech, in your interactions with other people, uh, this these religious bridal on your tongue, controlling your tongue and using your words and your speech in a way that glorifies God, your religion is useless. Well, I've been down that road as a young man. You know, I, I started you know cussing and stuff when I was a teenager just because it was fun, and then got saved, and then realized afterwards that it's it's very difficult to stop. And once you start slipping back down that road, you know, the moment you let your your talk and your speech start slipping, your behavior is gonna gonna follow after that. Yep. And it's not just it becomes easier, it becomes necessary. Your behavior is going to absolutely start following that downward path because yep. you start rationalizing. If you rationalize this, you will by human nature rationalize something bigger. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, speaking of speaking of speech and our words and the yep. power of our voices, yep, yep. Um, I have a confession to make. Ooh, confession. I am going to share with you one of my guilty pleasure TV shows. Do you have a, do you have a guilty pleasure TV show? Like the ones that you like, you oh. don't share with a bunch of people, but it, like it's one of your go-tos. Like it just feels good when you watch it. And um, But you wouldn't be necessarily be forthcoming with like, hey, I really like this show. Probably. I can't think of one right off the top of my head. Here's, but, here's mine. Yeah, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Elizabeth and I have really gotten into The Masked Singer. Okay. I, I can see that. Love that show. I love the entire premise. I love the concept. For those of you who don't know what the Mass Singer is, it's this singing competition show. Uh, but all of the it's celebrities. Every guest is a celebrity, mm-hmm. not necessarily musician right. or, or vocalist, but right. every guest is a celebrity. But they're completely disguised. Their voice is disguised. They, I mean, head to toe costume like they're dressed like a like a skunk or a banana or just crazy outlandish costumes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they have to sing on the show, so their voice is disguised when they're talking. But it is their actual voice yeah. singing. And based on like the clue package and based on their singing voice, the celebrity guests, their celebrity judges have to determine who they are. It's just such a fun show. I I, I hear you and I hear your excitement <laughs> and I want to engage you on that. I'm looking at the multi view monitor and David just looks disgusted like like while you were talking and, and setting up the premise of the show he just was like shaking his head david i mean you clearly have something you want to say i um do not like the mass thing why i just don't i don't know ellie loves it ellie i loves it. i know she loves it because elizabeth and ellie text back and forth about so here's here's what i'll singer. say here's what i'll say on the mass singer because i have if if your wife likes something like it's it's just gonna be on in your house I don't like those fake scripted reality shows, especially yeah. competitions. Yep. That being said, Mass Singer has a very interesting premise. Yep. It's very uh I don't want to say original, but it is it is compelling. Yeah. I, I think that it's a very I think premise wise, it's very, very, very strong. And it has the potential, not only the potential, it's kind of guaranteed to draw people in because yeah. it's celebrities, it's a voice competition, which people already like after American Idol. Um, it's like you trying to figure out with the judges. I mean, it just works. Yeah. The whole thing just works. Well, I think one of the things I like the most about it is where you have like American Idol or The Voice or America's Got Talent or one of those, mm-hmm. you name the other shows. It's somebody trying to make their big break. Yeah. Like somebody, like if I win this mm-hmm. or even if I just get into like the top three, mm-hmm. I- I'm going to be set as right. a recording artist. Right. Whereas these people are already celebrities. Yeah. They're already famous. They're, so there's not really anything riding on the line for them. It's just fun. The state, yeah, the stakes aren't for them. It's for us because it's like, I want to figure out the mystery. Well, 
right. it's, it's a game that I'm playing rather than a game that we're watching other people play. Exactly. And it's kind of and it's and it, it does kind of work because you then you start texting your friends. Who do you think it is? Yeah. Who do you think it is? And then we kind of see if we're right. We yep. can get like office pools going. I mean, conceptually. It works very well. Do I, think, I go ahead? I think that I would like it. I really think that I would like it if it were more like we're watching um, behind a curtain or like behind this like glass frame or something where like if you knew who it was. No, 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 no. Like we don't know who it is still, but I just don't like the the costumes and the masks and the like. I, that, I, I don't know what you it don't is. like that like the like the wacky getups. Right. You know how y'all don't like like cosplayers. Uh, Ryan likes cosplay just fine. Okay, you know how you don't like cosplay? Yes. Yeah. It's like that. But I don't like when these I watch people are on them TV. Up, they're not in the grocery store buying ham <laughs> next to me while I'm shopping. I don't know. That's I what I don't I like. I got to pick up my milk and coffee creamer and walk around. I don't have anything. Like a, a caterpillar. Yeah, I don't have anything against like people cosplaying and going to like conventions and stuff and have it live in their own life. I don't want to be like standing in like a, a Ralph's or a Trader Joe's and they're next to me. <laughs> That's what I don't want. <laughs> I mean, I think the Mass Singer is kind of cheesy and hokey, but sometimes people like cheesy yeah. hokey TV. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, it is very cheesy. It is very hokey. The dialogue is mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. I mean, it's predictable. Like, it's very obvious that some moments between the judges are scripted. Like, it, it, it is very cheesy and hokey, but it kind of leans into that and makes fun of it. I see. I try not to be a TV snob. Yeah. Because movie snobs, I don't like. Because, like, for me, I love the Godzilla movies. Those, these new, like, monarch Godzilla films, they are objectively bad. Like, like <laughs> they, the human characters, I couldn't tell you a single person's name. Yeah. Brian Cranston was, like, all marketed to be in the first one, and he was in it for, like, 15 minutes. They are objectively bad movies. But I love them because there's giant monsters fighting, and I don't want people to make fun of them. I'm trying to do that with TV because Ellie loves these these shows, and I only say negative things about it. So I'm trying to see it in that perspective of people just want to watch stupid nonsense on TV and have fun. Yep. So... I don't know why there, there's a shift in my mind where movies that's okay, like Mario Brothers movie, Sonic the Hedgehog movie, they were terrible, but I'm like, they're still fun and they're they're fun to watch. For some reason, all my TV has to be like serious. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. I love it. Ooh, it's, Matt Singer. It's, it's fun. It's just kind of like chill. We can put it on and like, it, I mean, it's just kind of like a good way to unwind. That's Ryan's recommendation. Day. Watch there the Matt Singer. Matt Singer. It's on, available on Hulu. Season I don't know where two, else it is. Season two coming out this spring no they're on season nine season nine you're season joking nine. me Mm-mm. i need that to be taken out because i sound like a fool season nine <laughs> season. this show's been and y'all are just getting into it now no no, no. we've been oh, we've been, been into, into it, okay. it. kind of fell off a little bit but we missed a couple seasons getting here and back there so it. we're watching season nine but the episodes only come out once a week mm-hmm. so in the interim we're like backtracking and watching like season six fun yeah all right that's good stuff Cool. We're going to grab Dr. Sean in just a minute. We've got a great episode planned for you guys today. If you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028 or visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, Clearview Today listeners. My name is John. And I'm David. And we just want to take a quick second and let you know about another way that you can keep in touch with Dr. Shah's work. And that is his weekly podcast series, Sermons by Abadan Shah, PhD. As a lot of you may know, or maybe some of you don't know. If you don't know, you do now. And if you don't know, then maybe just hop off the podcast. David, I'm just playing. hop off the podcast. I'm just playing. Keep listening. <laughs> Dr. Shaw is actually the lead pastor of Clearview Church in North Carolina. Every single weekend, he preaches expository messages that challenge and inspire us to live God-honoring lives. Well, one of the four core values of Clearview Church is that we're a Bible-believing church. So every sermon is coming directly from Scripture, which is great because that guarantees that there are timeless truths that are constantly applicable to our lives. This is a great resource because whether you're driving, whether you're cleaning the house, whether you're working out, you can always benefit from hearing the Word of God spoken into your life. And God's Word is always going to do something new for you every time you hear it. Sometimes it's conviction, and sometimes it's encouragement. But know that every time you listen to God's Word, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to move and work in your life. You guys can check out the Sermons by Abadan Shah PhD podcast. First and foremost, check it out on our church app. Uh, That's the Clearview app. You can get that in the Google Play Store. You can get that on iTunes. But you can also find the podcast on the Apple Podcast app or on our website at clearviewbc.org. And listen, if you've got a little extra time on your hands, you just want to do some further reading, you can also read the transcripts of those sermons. Those are available on Dr. Shah's website, abadanshah.com. And we're going to leave you guys a little link in the description so you can follow it. But for right now, David... Let's hop back in. All right.
Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028. That's absolutely right. And if you've never listened to the Clearview Today show before, today's your first day ever joining in with us. We want to thank you for being here, make you feel welcome, let you know who's talking to you. Dr. Abaddon Shah is a Ph.D. in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abaddonshah.com. That's right. Dr. Shah is trained. Is about oh, to leave the station. Oh, Ryan, you, you had to. Yeah, all aboard. You had to. All aboard the Clearview train. <laughs> you know, I don't like to toot, toot my own horn. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, I don't like to toot my own horn, but uh, toot, toot. 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 <laughs> so we, uh, we're we using the railroad lingo today because on this day, May, uh, May the, the 10th. 10th in 1869, um, Union Pacific Railroad and Central Pacific Railroads were joined together to form the Transcontinental Railroad. This is the day that that golden spike, oh. that commemorative golden spike, mm-hmm. was driven in the ground at Promontory Point, and the, our nation was officially connected. Well, if we had this show back in 2019, it would have been the 150th anniversary of mm-hmm. the Transcontinental Railroad. You know, this, this was a monumental engineering achievement that laid down almost about 2,000 miles of railroad. Now, think about that. We're going back to during the Civil War period. Mm-hmm. This is when this was happening. I preached on this. That's why, mm-hmm. that's why I have information where, uh, you know, after the United States, you know, passed the law and they said, okay, this can happen. Because prior to that, only way to go across is on uh, like a stagecoach or you can get on a ship and go all the way across. I mean, that is a almost an impossible task mm-hmm. but to go across the country you know you know the, the country has has now opened up mm-hmm. you know go west young man you can there's so many resources out there so many wonderful things opportunities land waiting for you but to go across um, in a stagecoach not only is it dangerous but also it's so difficult mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the ships of course hard to do so Railroad, you know, uh, this was the way it was going to be. Is it James Watts who who saw the steam engine thing, you know, how how to, he was boiling water or mm-hmm. whatever, and he learned from that, you know, the power of steam. Oh, yeah, the steam engine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You know, and so, you know, this all began. Going back to American history, the Union Pacific built west from Omaha, Nebraska, and the Central Pacific built from Sacramento, California, and with a little help from Western Pacific. And mm-hmm. so they moved, and they went through mountains and valleys and even deserts. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine that? Mountains, valleys, and deserts. Yeah, trying to move yeah. railroad track through all these different terrains. Right. Wow. And this was done during the Civil War. See, right in the middle of like this big term, yes. tumultuous thing. Yeah, 1863 doing this. to 1869. That's crazy. I don't think I realized that that it was happening yeah. at the same time. <laughs> those those are just separated in my mind. Like this is something that happens during peacetime, obviously, because it's this yeah. major construction. So this wouldn't be when we're fighting a war, but it's they're happening at the same they're time. They're doing it right when the country is, in a sense, falling apart. Mm-hmm. Wow. And you know, maybe maybe not everybody would say that, but I mean, it's. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, no, but I mean, the North is right. fighting, fighting the South, South is fighting the North. We've got two sides of the country literally fighting each other, yeah. killing each other, and, and it seems like, you know, they're, we're more divided than we've ever been, and yet there's this big unifying construction right. marvel happening that how, brings us together. How significant that it's happening at the same time when there's such such pronounced division. Here's this act of unification. Mm-hmm. Right, and so this is happening, and, and so on May the 10th, so you're going back 1869, um, 153 years ago now, mm-hmm. uh, they put that golden spike uh, into the ground where these two met. And so this was a, uh, it's called Promontory Summit, Utah, mm-hmm. is where this happened. And it completed the first railroad connecting the U.S. East Coast with the West Coast. Wow. Yeah, that's 1869. Something that, that's something I've never done is ridden on a train. I would, really? I've never been on no, a I've train. I've never been on a train. You haven't been on a train? I've never. How about you? I've never been on a train. Now, I've been on the Metro when we went to D.C., yeah. but like a train? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, H- have you train. been on a train, David? No. Never been I never on have. Wow. I would love to. I, I never have. So that was the That's thing crazy. that I, that was the thing that interested me because you told me, and I've seen videos on your phone that you've shown me that growing up, yeah, in Busaval, India, it was it was a complete railway junction. Like there was nothing but trains. Yeah, this would be a good impetus for our 
um, viewers to watch this on YouTube because mm -hmm. I, I want us to drop some pictures yeah, here. We'll drop some, we can drop some videos right here. Too. Tons of pictures, um, old pictures mm -hmm. and new pictures mm -hmm. of railroad. No, growing up, in fact, we are a railroad family. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, Thomas Franklin, that's who my our son Thomas Franklin is named after. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind on my dad's side of the family. Uh, you won't find Thomas Franklin as names. <laughs> yeah. It's a Muslim side of the family. Yeah. Yeah. My ga dad got saved, so that's a different story. But my mom's side, you know, several generations, you know, they're, they're Christians, and, you know, we don't know exactly how these, these things happen. But anyways, um, her dad was Thomas Franklin. Mm -hmm. Her mom was Rebecca Franklin. Um, uh, so anyways, Thomas Franklin, he moved from North India to Busawal. That's where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Basawal is in Maharashtra, which is the same state where Bombay mm -hmm. or Mumbai today is the capital. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he moved to Basawal because Basawal was a massive train junction. And this is during the British time. So my, my grandfather worked with the British. And um, uh, the trains would come, and, and these were steam engines mm -hmm. at the time. Diesel hasn't come. Definitely no electric engines. This is steam engine, the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was instrumental. Thomas Franklin was instrumental in building uh, a full-fledged um, locomotive shed. Mm. It was called the Loco Shed, but Locomotive Shed in Basawal. Mm. His name was in a plaque and stuff. I don't know where it is now. I'm sure they demolished that and have <laughs> something, <laughs> something new, else yeah. new built. Because that's you going back to the... 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. 60s, he was already retiring. So anyways, so we are a railroad family. Yeah. My grandfather was was a, um, in the, was living in a Type 1. Type 1 is like a big house mm -hmm. for because he was the head of the local shed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. What, yeah. Was it, what was it like growing up in, in a railroad family and in like a railroad junction, just yeah. constantly seeing those trains going in and yeah. out, in and out. What, what was that like? Well, I didn't grow up in the railroad family because, you know, by the time I came along, my grandfather had died mm -hmm. because of an accident. It was tragic, but he passed away a year before I was born. But we lived literally, I would say, one, a quarter of a mile from the train station. Oh, wow. Okay, so... All hours of the day, this is not like in the morning, in the afternoon, evening. No, all hours of the day, 3 o'clock, 6, 1.30, you know, whatever. You could hear the train whistle. Mm. Coo, coo, coo. Just I mean, always. Yeah, all, yeah. And you could hear the, you know, the, the tracks. Was it all through the night too? All through the night. Wow. Yeah. And for me, it was comforting mm. to hear the train it's like, oh yeah. When you came to America, did you did it feel like too quiet? Oh yeah, it's like, quiet. Like, especially in Georgia, like in the country, yeah. you just hear like crickets. There's no. <laughs> yeah. I would. I, my brother would take me down to the train train station. There was a crossing there, just uh -huh. like we have in Henderson, and I would sit there and watch train for mm. a couple hours. See, that's the thing is like growing up, I saw trains, but they were always like cargo trains that were just passing. You had to yeah. stop. But like trains that people get on to travel places, that was I knew that it happened, but it was just kind of foreign because I'd never done it and I'd never known anybody well, who for a there. long time. For me, I th I thought that was something that didn't happen anymore. Like that was an, that was an old timey thing. People didn't ride trains anymore. It was just for like just for cargo. When you when you have that many people, like growing up in a railway junction, and and there's a station where people are just constantly filing in and out and getting on one train and going to another, was it difficult? Do you think for people who lived in Busavel to kind of make roots with other people, or did that not factor into it? Uh, you're talking about people getting on different trains? Yeah, I mean, like, did people did people come to Busavel to settle? Yes. Okay. Yes, because, um, in fact, our church, mm -hmm. all right, our church uh, was there back from, like, late 1800s. Mm -hmm. The British used to worship there. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of story there. One day I'll talk about it. Um, but anyways, uh, can I, can I say, yeah, please sh share quick on that? Oh, please. Go. All right. Uh, this church was part of a revival that was started by a missionary who came from near Charlottesville, Virginia, mm -hmm. and he was funded. He was supported by the Lee family. Like Robert E. Lee? Robert E. Lee family. Oh, wow. So, wow. Go figure that out. How in the world <laughs> from Virginia, Charlottesville <laughs> to me? 
in India, but this is way before my time. Right. So this is like in the, you know, 1850s, 60s when these revivals happened. That's and wild the though. Churches were founded. And so this building was built, and there was two brothers. They were known as the Black Brothers, uh-huh. uh, the British officers who built that church. And initially it was for the railway officers hmm. in the British um, government who, hmm. were, who were staying in all these places. But when British left India, um, you know, it still continued as a railway junction, but, this, but now more and more Indian officers were coming in or train drivers or as simple as uh you know peons mm-hmm. who would work for this officer or that officer in the railroad uh R- uh R- rpfs railway police force officers were also would settling there and many of them were christians so they would come to our church mm. and we were one of the only churches where not only was the gospel preached but also it was in, in the english language it was in the hindi language all of this so it was, it was quite fascinating. Wow. So you saw a lot of people coming into the church that were just there from the railway junction? like They came because of the railways. I got you. And, and they went looking for a church. And some of them came from many different denominations. Like they were, um, you know, CSIs, mm-hmm. uh, Church of South India or CNI, Church of North India, or, I mean, just you name it, you know, Syrian Orthodox Church. Uh, from South India. So a lot of different kind of people who came to our it, church. See, I think that's interesting because I think in, at least here, no, maybe not at Clearview, because at Clearview we have people that are not just from our town. Like people travel from other towns to come here. But I think with smaller churches across America, it's like the, you live in this town, you go to this church. Mm-hmm. But here it seems like people are traveling in. So it would not be uncommon for people to be like, yeah, I'm from some other completely different part of India, and I, but I wanted to come here and look for this church at the real, like, coming in from the railway. Yeah, yeah. But here here it was it, it was quite interesting. Yeah. And so my dad, you know, he had that calling to come to that church by my grandfather, who was kind of a lay pastor helping mm-hmm. the church as long as he could. And then when he felt like my retirement time is here, so he called up the seminary to see if they could send pastor, and that's how my dad came. Wow. And he started two services. There was a Hindi service, there was an English service, and... Keep in mind, the local language is Marathi. Mm -hmm. Mm. So these are all transplants. Wow. And they ended up staying there. Many of them, instead of going back home when they retired, it's like they're from New Orleans, Mm -hmm. but they're coming here to work in tobacco. Let's Mm -hmm. just say that. But once once you cross a certain age, I mean, why would you want to stick around here? You would go back to New Orleans. Yeah. But they would stay because of the church. Mm. You know, and that that, that was very, very special. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful picture of, of just the impact. That, that the church and that your dad had, I mean, that would that would draw people, that would that would keep people there when they didn't have any reason to stay other than the church. Right. That was that sticking power. Uh, I think that's lost on a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But but going back to the railroads, I mean, it was a fun life. We we traveled so much by railroad. I mean, I went to see the the um, Taj Mahal. You know, wow. or the railroad to go see. Were they comfortable? Places. Were the trains comfortable? Well, you had to the... you had to make sure that you were in either the first class or the air conditioned. Oh mm-hmm. no! <laughs> if you go further back, yeah, it gets rough. Not gonna be a good ride. Mm-hmm. No, Bump, no, no, bumpy. But no, it's not about bumpy. You have a lot of people jumping in on it. Oh really? You know, and um, like people like um, people jumping in like from in the boxcars. Oh like, yeah, in? oh yeah. And the RPF is there, the railway police uh-huh. force. I mean, they'll get them. Yeah. But by the time they get them, they already made your ride miserable. Yeah, mm. you know, you're sleeping, and they'll come and sit on on your berth. You know. Oh, oh no! And you're like, hey, <laughs> wait, and you want to fight with them because you you lose. Yeah, are they just like bums or like they're bums? They are, you know, just just you know, very low workers. Yeah, who trying just to get a free ride. Get a free ride to here to there. It's wow. bad. So first class and AC is the way to go. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard to get the tickets. There's a story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, this happened. I was with my dad. And, uh, you know, we got the ticket, but the ticket, we couldn't get it. It's kind of an unexpected train ride we had to make. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he said, let's just go to the first class. I'm like, Dad, we don't have the tickets. like, well, let's just go and see what happens. Now you gotta be careful when you do that. You get arrested. So yeah, I'm like all scared. The RPF don't play. No, you you don't you don't <laughs> you don't want to do that. So, you know, we we got in there, and then the the ticket collector started coming. Oh no! And I'm like, oh, oh my no, no. word! How old were you? 
I was maybe eight or nine years of age. <laughs> oh, wow. So old enough to know this might be bad. This yeah. may be bad. <laughs> and so he keeps coming, keeps coming, and I'm like, gosh, we're going to get thrown out at the next day, how embarrassing it is, or maybe get arrested. I don't know how this, why would my dad even do this? Why, <laughs> why, why, why? <laughs> this is crazy. Well, there's a reason why dad did that. Several reasons. Number one, my cousin mm -hmm. was high up in the railroads. So he, he, he started as a ticket collector, but he moved up. He was very industrious, very hardworking, very smart. Uh, he's like 20 years older than me, wow. but, but he was high up. So there was already, already that umbrella there. Mm -hmm. My other cousin was also in the, in the railroads. He was not very hardworking. <laughs> he was, he was, <laughs> but because of his brother, he yeah, was yeah. quite, uh, quite, he could do whatever. Kind of yeah, he was kind of like a goon type, you know, a tough, <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough guy. <laughs> The muscle. Yeah, yeah. muscle kind of guy. And then the guy shows up to our thing. And he sees my dad. He said, oh, Mr. Uh, Shaw, how, how are you doing? And my dad is <laughs> like, hey, you know, just shake hands. And uh, my dad kind of whispers in his ears. He's like, oh, no, no problem. Just, we just, we'll, we'll take care of that at the next station, whatever we got. It's all good. I'm like, that's what just good, happened? Yeah, that's a good feeling what right there. What just happened? <laughs> my dad's like, oh, he was my student back in in um, in college. That's I was like, happens. oh, because see, my dad was also a uh, college professor mm -hmm. teaching math and and science, physics, really. And a lot of these guys actually came studied under him, and he recognized his old professor, and he's like, oh, uh, sh don't worry about that. We'll take care of you next station. This guy's getting off. You have that birth. Mm. Wow. We're like, oh, okay. That's a good feeling. He had <laughs> it on lock you. the whole time. He had it on lock, but here I'm an eight year old sweating bullets thinking we're about to get tied up and taken. <laughs> I like when, I like, that's a very dad thing to do, though. Like, you know, yeah. the whole situation is going to be fine, but you're like, well, let's just go see what happens. And I go, what, what? Huh? So it looks like they kind of pulled out happens. the trump card and yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Did your dad travel a lot on the railways when he was preaching? Oh, like going to pre preach other churches? Yeah. He, uh, this was not by plane. My dad never traveled by plane mm -hmm. to go anywhere in India. Mm -hmm. Now, he traveled by plane when he came to America, to Korea, to Africa, to Paris for preaching and all that, but never inside the country. Because mm -hmm. that that's like for the rich and the famous. Really? Mm -hmm. Today, it's maybe different. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking about his 70s and 80s, oh, yeah. yeah you won't travel Indian Airlines wow. in, in, in inside the country. So it was all by train. Okay. All by train. And so... Um, coming and going, G going was, was kind of obvious. He would hire a taxi or auto rickshaws, what they call them. And they would take him to the train station and all that stuff. Coming back, he would hire a, um, they, they, they call, what's the name for it? They call them coolies and they are porters. Okay. And they carry your bag all the way to where you're going. Wow. They're porters. Coolie work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so he would, he would hire a, one of his favorite ones, and, and they would have like five bags on top of their head. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's crazy how they do that on top of your head. Wow. And, and my dad would walk in front, and they would be walking behind and come home. Dad would always have some things for us, you know, and then he would have plants. He would love bring plants from all part of the world yeah i remember you saying that in one the of country. your messages yeah, yeah. go and he would bring mm -hmm. plant he would bring plants back from climates that like didn't match yeah die and stuff and then these coolies would be holding this bag and this plant <laughs> and i would like to see that i bet that's a pretty funny sight just like all these bags stacked on top but they just never drop yeah they just are oh yeah so, they don't drop them they're so in they don't control. drop everything them. is on lock yeah what is uh, even now i mean as you maybe are passed by a train or you think about you think about railways does it bring about any like nostalgia for oh, you yeah. for childhood or anything like that absolutely you know where we are as a country as a people you know we're forgetting a lot mm. which is worth remembering keeping in mind because those things trains train stations um traveling you know watching the countryside the farms mm -hmm. the the valleys the mountains the rivers you know going over them the bridges all those things are are things that make life special mm -hmm. and i think we're sort of like i said last sunday morning we're sort of drowning in this technological uh, I, I don't know goo yeah. <laughs> yeah which is fine i'm all for technology but 
maybe we're missing something. Right? Well, yeah, there's so much of it that nothing seems special anymore. Yeah. Like, what was the last, like, even this whole, like, AI thing, it's like, that should be blowing our minds, but we're like, eh. Well, now, yeah. now Elon Musk tells us that AI can be trained to lie. Yeah, and they're like, oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay, yikes! <laughs> it's just, it's That's just no good. I'm kind of with you. It's like when this, when this. I mean, just to bring it back full circle, when yeah. this uh, transcontinental thing was finished, there was just a, even in the midst of this war, there was just an American pride, like, yeah. look what we've done for God's glory. Yeah. This yeah. is so unifying yeah. for us. And, and not necessarily everybody who was involved in that project were born again Christians. Sure, sure, but. In a sense, it was something special about our nation. Mm -hmm. So remembering those things, remembering this day, thanking God for this nation, praying for this nation. That's right. Um, and, and seeing, you know, how far we've come and how far we need to go, mm -hmm. and how far we need to return to God. Mm -hmm. All these things are part of um, the good life. You know, the Bible talks about whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just. You know, the good, mm -hmm. the lovely. Meditate on these things. So. To me, trains and and travel like that are the good things. Amen. That's right. Yeah, Amen. I love that so much. Love that picture, that that nostalgic picture of, you know, a time gone by. Something that's worth recapturing, refocusing, mm. revisiting. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to two five two five eight two five zero two eight, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow dot com. You can also partner with us financially on that same website. Every gift that you give goes not only to building up this radio show, but countless other ministries for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love you guys. We'll see you next time on Clearview Today. Thank you.